It's time for Side Scrollers with me, Stuttering Craig. You decide what you lose, not other people. And blast. I like pickles. And co-hosted by our friends from around the internet. If you like common sense, hit that thumbs up button and of course the subscribe button and join us Monday through Friday live at 11 a.m. Central Time. And now, broadcasting from our homes, it's time for the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on God's green earth. It's time for Side Scrollers. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, welcome on out to Side Scrollers on YouTube.com and Rumble.com and SideScrollers.locals.com. What's going on, everybody? Hey! Happy Tuesday to you. I'm Stuttering Craig. Welcome to the number three video game podcast in Canada. We're back, baby. Let's go. Great to see everybody. Are your eyes okay? Did you survive? Blabs, did your eyes survive? Are you blind? I can see. I feel like Anchorman guy. I'm blind. But yeah, no, I'm not. A, I'm glad you survived. Did your phone survive? It did! And you know what? I even ran home because I was out on a walk, which was not a great idea because everything went dark and I was like, huh, I'm in the woods. <laughs> and I ran home and grabbed my camera right when it was super dark so it wouldn't screw up my lens if it ever did. And I got some nice shots. So. Oh, good for you. Good for Thanks. you. Well, I'm, I'm glad you survived. There was no giant laser that came down from the sky. No, there was no Death Star. No. <laughs> no Death Star that we know of. Although, there, I don't know if you saw this. And Razor, I'm, I'm very intrigued by this. Joining us today, back again, Tuesday with Razor Vest. What's up, Razor? <laughs> Tag team. Yeah, I had to show up because you guys were having too good of a time. I'm like the IRS that way. <laughs> Razor, <laughs> did you see? Did you see the alien spaceship over Arlington, Texas? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I, and I would have watched the eclipse, but that would have required going out in the sun. And that's mm, not yes. Good. Last time I did that, I actually vampire? caught on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I went outside, I I think the last time I caught on fire, I started shouting free Palestine. It was a whole thing. Huh. Good to know. <laughs> Get those glasses on, Blabs. There you go. You know, there you are. I'll there tell you, you what. This is a... I look like uh, a narc. <laughs> we all look like narcs. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of narcs, joining us today... <laughs> Shit! <laughs> What's up, Grubs? Wow. Hey, I'm coming to you from an undisclosed location because I'm currently being stalked and hunted. Yeah, he's in witness list. now. <laughs> <laughs> Got my bodyguard detail. Well, I'm glad they're you're all, here. They're all hot women from North yeah. Korea military. Nice, <laughs> man. Good Are you me. Eric Swalwell? What is that? <laughs> you know, hot women with Uzis. We do need to get you some uh, some sunglasses on today to, to go with your regular. Uh, <laughs> I know. I should, I should oh, you should get the like them. 8-bit sunglasses from the meme just over, yes. the, over the avatar there. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Well, look, obviously we have a great day. We all survived the apocalypse yesterday, uh, the eclipse, yeah. which is great. Um, the, moon, thought, the moon has blocked the sun, which means yep. it's a game journalist, apparently. I don't know. We saw... Uh, <laughs> There was the super chat yesterday of uh, they thought they saw the apocalypse, but it turned out it was just Lizzo uh, who had yeah. taken a walk. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, you know, so we, we're going to have a great show today. Once again, we are live over at rumble.com slash side school. Let's join us over there. The uh, over 6,000 followers of freedom and common sense over at Rumble. If you're a fan of that, make sure you hit the follow button over there. Could have found out that Razor and Grums are going to be on the show by following us over at X at x.com slash side scroller pod. We also have an Instagram, don't we, Blabs? We do, so follow us for memes and clips of the show. Otherwise, lots of violence. I mean, lots of it. In Power World, obviously, right, YouTube? You know, you're... You could you, you could be more aggressive in how you say that, Blabs. Why? What? what it, I could literally just be like, in violence. You wouldn't you know. like a... Like a non-threatening like ant. Yeah, so, but what if I I could be an ankle biter for all you know? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? No I could you want her to like, sound like James Earl Jones or like what? No, I could. Yeah. What do you want me to be like, Simba? Yeah, like, give us you... a give us a quick. This is CNN. Come on. This is CNN. Oh, 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 do in a world 
<laughs> yes. No, 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 no. Stop reverting to your stupid Smurf sound. That's not a Smurf. That Stitch made had stuff with Gollum. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> uh, speaking of Gollum, make sure you guys follow me over. Uh, follow us over at uh, sidescrollers.locals.com. As in just one week, I will be watching for the first time Lord of the Rings. Uh, oh my goodness. Razor has- Yes. Have you seen Lord of the Rings before? Raven? You're watching, of course, the Ralph Bakshi cartoon, of course. I don't even know what don't you're talking talk about. He doesn't know what that means. Yeah, what does that mean? What does that mean? It's the cartoon version of Lord of the Rings. It came out decades before the uh, Peter Jackson films. Oh, no. I'm going to watch the Peter Jackson film. Yeah. <laughs> okay. no, they're fantastic, actually, and you should watch them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to watch the, the theatrical cut first and foremost because uh, everyone's like, it's been like 75, 25% as far as theatrical versus extended cut. So I'm going to watch yeah. the theatrical first and then later if I like it. Bro, yeah. the, the, the some of those extended editions are like, they're not even a movie. They're a life choice. It's like, f- what yeah, is Return like of the Kings? Yeah, Return of the Kings, like almost five hours or something. Like you have to yeah. set aside a weekend. Yeah. And I did make a poll on Twitter for you, by the way, Craig, on Sidescore's Twitter. And I was like, should Craig watch the theatrical, the extended version? With over a thousand votes, 82% said the extended. So, you know. But also, by the way, you're muted. So it's kind of like a mute Craig. I know, I know, I know, I know. I I couldn't, listen, if you look at what I said, it was probably, it'd probably get us demonetized. (laughs) (laughs) The word fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, We'll just pretend it was elvish. I don't know. Okay, 82%. That's crazy. Yeah. CEO comes in, says 82% are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. Well, that's that's silly. I guess we'll uh, we'll need to take a hard look at that. And by that, I mean I'm just gonna watch the theatrical. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, well, not yeah, well, really. People do, but you know. I mean, the movies are like three hours long. Yeah, it, you have theatrical. to plan that out like six months in ahead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Even the theatrical versions are some of the longer movies that you'll ever watch. So right. don't worry about it. <laughs> You're no, not we'll missing me. If it, if it goes great, which I think it will, then we'll come back and do the extended version later on. But first and foremost, make sure you guys head over to sidescrollers.locals.com because that's the only place it's going to be because we can't do it on YouTube. We can't do it on Rumble because I'm actually going to show the video, <laughs> show the movie as best as I possibly can until local says no. And then, then it'll become a watch along. So Uh, Make sure you guys tune in for that. Once again, it's free to sign up. If you want to support over there, you can, uh, but it is free and you get notifications whenever we go live. That's one of the great things about locals. Um, Does does Amazon incidentally, do Amazon still do the watch party feature on that? Because many, many years ago, or I don't know, like three or four years ago, I did a watch along with Dread, the Judge Dread movie on Twitch yeah. and mm-hmm. it was an official thing. They could watch along with me and whatever. It was fine. And it was, you didn't get nailed for copyright or whatever. I just don't know if they still do that or not. Uh, I believe it is still a feature uh, on Twitch, but we are no longer on Twitch. We have, yeah. we have moved away from <laughs> Twitch because they're fucking idiots. Yeah. So Which came uh, to your senses. Did you? Yes. What's that grumps? Twitch sucks. I, I have like zero interest in it now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they've, uh, I just don't even know what they're doing with their platform to be totally real. Like I, they're just all over the place. They've they're they are, there's no bar as far as what is allowed on Twitch and what isn't allowed yeah. on Twitch. Here, here's, I mean, here's the bar. Here's the bar. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the bar. Soft core porn. There's your, there's your bar. <laughs> yeah. You have True. to have bars over you know, your they, boobs. They, it's they a, it it's a, the bar. So the bar is a strip bar. That's that's what it is. <laughs> the strip bar. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, well, find us over there, uh, over at uh, sidescrollers.locals.com. But once again, find us also over on Apple Podcasts. There's a link down below. Uh, we just started promoting this in the past week, and we are already in the top five podcast in the United States. You know, I had a good conversation this morning and uh, with, with somebody inside the industry, and they said, hey, love what you're doing. You guys are a reality check for the industry. And I said, that is is a great tagline. That is 100% right. Side scrollers is the reality check. And I can't wait to get number one so we can just do this to the entire fucking industry and be like, don't you get it? Don't you understand? Anyways, so yeah, that's awesome. Find us over on Apple Podcasts, which is great. Uh, 
you, if it's your first time tuning in over here on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. The 75,300 common sense lovers here on YouTube. Let's hit our goal of 700 likes. We're already over 500. Let's get to uh, get those rookie numbers up, get to 700. And of course, our goal of 25 memberships every single episode, which would be absolutely great. I would like to point out that Sabarishi came in and picked up the brand new side scrollers unisex hoodie, as well as one other piece of merch, otherwise known as the side schoolers all-star baseball tee available right now to the end of April. Make sure you pick one up. Link is in the description. Uh, once again, that is, will be available till the end of the month or until they're gone. So thank you so much. Uh, Sabrishi. appreciate that it says yo side scrollers, uh, side scrollers, hoodie and baseball t-shirt as well. Let's freaking go. Y'all uh, already bring a smile to my face as well to the chat, making these days, uh, far better from screw attack today. I can't thank you enough. G twos for life, baby hoodie gang, hoodie gang, gang. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. Hoodie gang gang sounds like shitty shitty bang bang. <laughs> That's right. Hoodie gang gang, which is great. Yeah, the the uh, the hoodie. As we as we move into uh, the spring and summer months, what better way to commemorate the heat by than by buying a hoodie, which is great. What if they live in Alaska? I don't think Sub lives in Alaska. But How do you know? You what if what if they're Craig? just a real man, Craig? You know, that's just toxic razor. You're, you're, uh, and really what, what is a real man now? Right. <laughs> First what? we'd have to define what a man is. I don't know. <laughs> These are all wonderful questions yeah. that we just don't have answers to in the year 2024. Right. Uh, but look, we got a lot to talk about today. Um, lots to talk about. Grums is here, obviously hanging out down below. We're going to get into, uh, some very deep questions with Grums in just a little bit. Oh yeah. Uh, but first. I'd like to let you know that Peach Tea came in and says, Welcome back, Razor. Favorite Striper album. Mm, soldiers Under Command, dude. You have to look at that cover art. They're in front of a great big yellow and black murder van, and they've all got like automatic weaponry. It's a Christian album. <laughs> like, we're gonna, we're gonna go to war for Christ with fully automatic weaponry it's beautiful it's freaking fantastic you gotta pull that up if you can it's the most the cheesiest thing ever shot in the 80s it's it, it, a music video uh it's the cover of the album soldiers under command by striper it's ridiculous well let's see what we got here okay it's like the a-team van <laughs> shane came in with the 10 over on rumble says uh, Craig, you must have known your producer is a, a sociopath. I just saw Blabs purposely kill people in Roller Coaster Tycoon all this time. I thought you were the crazy one. I stand corrected. Stay safe, Craig. <laughs> yeah. Thank okay, you. Appreciate that. She is psycho. Yes. Uh, Matthew says, Grums x 60% of gameplay time was spent on games six years or older in 2023. You have to wonder if the success of the Nintendo Switch is partially because Nintendo is still, is still focused on gameplay. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're moving away from gameplay in AAA and, and basically doing very expensive uh, movies with interactivity. And that's a big part of it. Well, uh, I think that there's there's a lot to be said. We, we talked about that. Blobs, did we get to that story last Marvel? week? I feel like we did. No, we never talked about it. It's on the, at the bottom of the document. Uh, Marvel 1943, Rise of Hydra. No, 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 not, not that one. I'm talking about the uh, the one about the 60 percent of games. The 60 percent of gameplay was played by like you know, it was like 60 ah. games or something. It was very short. I don't. Yeah. We, it was on the run sheet last week. We didn't get a chance to get to it. By the way, I do have Razor the Striker album here, pulled up, ready to go. Thank you, Blast, for getting it. <laughs> <laughs> now, the best thing about this album cover is that the stripes go across. Yes. But they they go like his his checkers go across, but his go vertical, right? Yeah, yeah. Like and, somebody... and I love I love the striped scarf. It's like perfect scarf weather <laughs> in wartime. And... <laughs> you gotta be what... fashionable, bro. Yes. What yeah. is this vehicle? What is this vehicle? I have I no know. idea. Like I said, it looks like the A team van, but it's brilliant. It looks like something in like Jurassic Park, but just really really yellow. Yes, absolutely. Grums. Uh, small request. Sure. For your game, Ember. Yeah. Can we get this vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all fans of Stripe. <laughs> I mean, I am now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who isn't looking at that image? Jeez. We could do a skin, so one of your mechs can have stripes on it. How's ah, that? there that? we are. Because I, I like I like that yellow and black. So yeah, yeah. it's gonna look like bumblebees, which would be which would be good. Transformers. Uh, 
That's great. All right, let's see. We got uh, Delta came in with a five. Says, only question I have for Grums because Nick of Second Wind doesn't want to retract his accusation with the 15K donor on Ember. There's no NDA to control that guy, is there? Thanks. Also, good luck on the project. I'm still waiting on Little Devil Inside. Well, yeah. we're going to get to that in a little bit, but, uh, you know, Delta asked a good question. Ember, uh, There's about no Ember. NDA. There's no okay. NDA. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Because uh, we'll get to that in a little bit for sure. So, so you're just saying for clarity, you don't have anybody that under NDA that says they can't talk about whatever with Ember. Nope. Cool. All right. In in fact, uh, none of our stuff uh, with the communities. They always ask me, do are do we have an NDA for the builds? Can I share the builds? Because we share, you know, in, everything, even like the the prototypes and stuff. I'm like, no, go ahead, share it. All right. Cool. And, and to be clear, you've been on the show before and we've actually asked, you know, uh, if you'd like to promote Ember and you're like, no, <laughs> you just yeah. said, no, lots, lots of people it. ask me, uh, if, if I want to, if I want to like talk about anything and I always say no. And I always say it's because I want to focus on the issues and, uh, I don't want to be, you know, accused of grifting or shilling or do anything like that, but they dragged me into it. All right. So this is not something that I ever wanted to talk about in this forum and uh but they made it a topic and they're gonna make it a topic so i have to talk about it now and thank you for doing that because our discord is up 1500 members over the weekend uh and they are quickly stry sanding us into uh, a marketing phase that we weren't prepared for but we'll accept well grums it's because you're a you're now a grifter yeah <laughs> yeah, anybody who takes money for anything is a grifter. You're not allowed to have a living or a project or anything else. Well, that is the uh, the state of the internet today, where if you have any sort of success, you, you're you immediately labeled an istophobe and a grifter. Yeah, isn't it wild how exchanging money for goods and services is now grifting? <laughs> like right. Yeah. Where, where's the, where's the grift? I make a thing, you buy the thing. We're both happier than we were before this transaction. This yeah. is the grift. <laughs> gotcha. They're even coming at me for Twitter subscribers. I'm like, dude, that's like 300 bucks. That's Steam library money. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to we're going to get to uh to Groms and Ember and all that stuff here real shortly um because we only have you for an hour grum so we're going to be uh brief and efficient with this but blabs right. wanted to first let us know uh that we have some anniversaries in the video game space that she wanted to celebrate today and boy oh boy mm -hmm. do we have some goodies blabs what do we have today okay so the first one is midnight club 2 is 21 years old now no one in the mother apparently according to craig has ever played hot dog king in a fast food empire because that is 17 years old but i just thought the title alone was hilarious and you basically just you know hot dogs and food why not and then if you guys have all played this, at least I have played it too, so that means everyone else has had to have played it. But Super Paper Mario is 17 years old, also released back in 2007. And yes, I know, I got fired this morning on Twitter because I picked the wrong thing. The end. Thank you. <laughs> you know, my only thing with that graphic is you have a spectacular game with Super Paper Mario. Uh-huh. And you chose to put Hot Dog King and Fast Food Empire in the center. Yeah, well, I go chronologically, and that was chronological order, release date. They were both 2007, but that one was above it. <laughs> you mean that somebody just put it, maybe because it's out higher than Super uh, Paper Mario? I don't Mario know, maybe? maybe it was by date. They don't have the dates on the website, but perhaps it was actually by date. Well, Blabs, today, that's the I know, like, I know it's on. both April 8th, but I don't know, man. I just... <laughs> 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 oh, I God. see Razor right. is giggling. <laughs> My bad. Listen. But today's April 9th, by the way, Blabs. It even says so on the graphic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's not my morning. <laughs> no, we got we to go back going. to bed. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get into it. It's time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, everybody in the world's favorite segment. It's time for hard news. <laughs>
All right, we got some really important we got some really important topics to talk about today. Really important things. Uh, but first and foremost, we must talk about the eclipse from yesterday. And Blabs wanted to share her thoughts on said eclipse. Nothing says video game entertainment news like talking about a moon and a sun. Yeah, Blab- that was cool, man. I loved it. I was out in the woods. But yeah, uh, look at that. That's beautiful. This is from your camera. Yeah, my power shot. Okay, so Grums, raise your quick, quick little backstory. Yesterday, uh, Labs was very concerned that her her camera would explode on her phone if she faced <laughs> if it faced the sun during the. Eclipse. I was afraid it would burn the lens or something, or like affect it slightly if you had staring at it for a good amount of time. So the I did not do nothing. Risk it. Right. Yeah, I, I did not risk it. Until at the very last moment when I was completely covering it and I got those images. No blabs. That's not the thing that if you do it too much, it makes you go blind. Stop it. What is? <laughs> uh, eating cheese. Oh, because you know, if you, if you touch rattlesnake powder, apparently like <laughs> the, the rattles, supposedly well, that makes you we'll tell so <laughs> well, I have some in my closet, funny enough. It's like double bagged and everything. <laughs> Me, myself, and your mother will tell you when you're older, Blabs. That's right. What is it? Blabs, just do, just do a quick Google to see <laughs> what causes blindness what causes by doing it too much. Blindness by, by doing it doing too much. Too much? Question mark. Oh, no. Mental stress as consequence of vision loss. Uh huh. Why did I suddenly go blind? Um, abnormalities of the retina. I don't see anything here, Craig. What's wrong? <laughs> Labs. What? She has safe search on, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Is it like like what? What? How about too much screen time affects kids' eyes with like go blind, Craig? From hey, Grums, can you uh fill Blabs in on glaucoma? On Do you have any idea, Grums, of what <laughs> on solar eclipses? <laughs> <laughs> where where are we? Labs, Labs. What universe is this? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh Blabs, just r- real quick. I'm just gonna it's one word. Masturbation. <laughs> I, I thought it was looking too much at eclipses. Okay. Great. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's the thing. You 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 whack it too many, too often, you go blind. That's the wives' tale back in the day, right? It explains so much. <laughs> that's that's the truth. The <laughs> chat knows, the racer knows. That is not why your wife said has been so poor bad lately, Craig. Yeah, yeah I, I, slowly over time, my, my eyesight is... <laughs> <laughs> Either that or you you turn into DSP. It's one or the other. Is that why you all, you three are wearing shades? Is that what's going on? <laughs> That's right. It's like, Am I just out on some... Yes! Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, Side Boomers. You wonder. <laughs> and a totally unrelated topic, uh, Google searches... You go, Google searches for my eyes hurt spiked yesterday. This is actually true. Uh, because people were staring at the eclipse yesterday <laughs> without protective goggles on. Um, eyes hurt, my eyes hurt, and why do my eyes hurt all peaked yesterday, shortly after the eclipse uh, in Google searches, uh, which really says a lot about the state of society. <laughs> it's nature at work. It's natural selection, folks. Oh, my God. There's a lot of blind mm-hmm. people in the world now. A lot of blind, what? Yeah, a lot of blind, at least people who want to identify as blind. I'll always go back to uh, go back to a story we did on on side scrollers uh, well over a decade ago now, where there was a young lady who really wanted to be blind, so she put bleach in her eyes. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It Why was my do favorite. people want to be blind and wear glasses? They're literally the most annoying thing. Ugh. Well, hold on, blind. Maybe, maybe she thought it would help her sing like Stevie Wonder or something. I don't know. Hold on, Labs. Did you just say blind people are the most annoying thing? No, glasses. I said no, able right. people are stupid. Okay. I was like, wow, blabs. It's very intense. I mean, I, dude, I ha- they're always like, you can't wear your contacts in the show. I'm like, if I don't, then I can't read the shampoo bottle. So, like, obviously, I do. So, I you need instructions for shampoo? No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's like seeing the shampoo bottles, what I'm saying. Like, actually, the words like shampoo, conditioner, because they're very similar bottles. All right. Yeah. All right, I'm, all right. I'm just giving an example saying that I have to wear contacts right. or else I, I just, can't. I'm speak. picturing Blabs reading the ingredients and stuff in the shower. <laughs> like, oh, this has riboflavin. Got it. Okay. <laughs> what? It's like getting it really close and 
Yeah. No, <laughs> like I actually, I need my glasses or contacts to drive. That's how bad it is. Like it says on my license, like you can. Oh, you're, you're you're supposed to scrub it into your scalp while you're doing it. Ah, okay. oh, I get it. Okay. You know, injustice. Right. My bad. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Uh, so I'm just uh, shut up now. <laughs> probably a good idea. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you're blind today, you can always listen to the show over on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> so congratulations. That's right, Razor. There you go. Uh, speaking of, in addition to losing sight, speaking of things we also lost in the last few days was the Nintendo Network over on the uh, 3DS and the Wii U. Uh, and captured in real time, there was a video being popped around. It has almost a million views over on X. The, uh, the time where the services all shut down and you can no longer play your 3DS or your Wii U on the internet. Um, Grums, when was the last time you played your 3DS or Wii U on the internet? Or did you, know, you ever? It's a long time. I still have them hooked up to the TV, and, uh, uh, and, but it, it's been years since I've touched them. They're kind of gathering dust. But still, you know, I love the topic of uh, archiving games and game preservation. And it's kind of sad to see that some of these features will be disabled on these games. Well, this was the moment that it happened in real time. This guy playing a little Mario Kart with his with his wonderful little flower uh, flower parachute up here. This guy is good at Mario Kart, so he's going on Rainbow Road. By the way, only in second place. What's up with that? That's the way he's going to be remembered. <laughs> he takes a tight turn, and there Aww. it goes. Lost Congratulations, her. gamer, on a job done. <laughs> there it is. It's real unfortunate. That, that was so sad. I thought it was sad. Like... I was like, oh, he can't even finish the race. Yeah, the the one Wii U owner is heartbroken. I have a Wii U. Well, and you're heartbroken. Uh, I mean, not not entirely, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just there. It's like yeah. a giant heavy paperweight. Those things are heavy, man. And even the cables connecting them, whoo, they're like giant ass power blocks, they're like that big. They're big. What um, have you guys ever kept a game going to keep a server going? You've heard you heard of that, like when um, Super Mario Thirty Five. Mario Thirty Five is a game was was like a limited time release window. That's that's like one of my favorite Mario games ever. It was a it was a Mario Battle Royale where you play the old school Super Mario Brothers and you just keep on playing until somebody wins. There's like 35 players and people would drop off. It was so much fun. But people did their best to keep that game alive and they would stay in game or there were, there's been other games where people would stay in game just to keep the servers up because they wouldn't pull them down until everybody was off. Yeah. Um, I, I, have you guys ever done anything like that to kind of keep the longevity going? My, no. Myself? No. No. What about you, Grump? No, just stay logged in to MMOs so you don't get kicked out, that type of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can't get it, it's kind of like the modern version of the old keeping the arcade machines running so the high scores don't get wiped thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Didn't they make a Seinfeld episode about that with the Frogger? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. It was. Uh, no. It was uh, Friends. I think was it Friends with uh, Donkey Kong or something, or for, maybe it was Frogger. It was some one of those '90s sitcoms where. Yeah. 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 They they had the claw. I think I think it was Friends, but uh, and. <laughs> I think the idea was they put all the bad words as the as the names, and then you had to <laughs> reset them. It's, it's pretty pretty. I funny know. Story. No pretty one funny. wants to see asses high score get removed. You know what I mean? Like nobody. Come on. Yes. Hey, check this out. That Park Place came in with the tit and says Grums on side scrollers. I'm watching every minute of this. Well, good. You can find us every day, Monday through Friday, awesome. 11 a.m. Central Time. By the way, that Park Place, we get a uh, we get a story from you coming up in just a little bit. So make sure you. Uh, greatly appreciate your support. All right. Uh, this is kind of an interesting story. Sea of Thieves has been announced coming to the PlayStation 5. Uh, and a, a, the closed beta trailer has been released. And this is a, a, a bigger question here, as this is, you know, this was previously a, a Microsoft exclusive. And uh, now it's coming over to the PlayStation 5. Um Grums, you're in the industry. You've been in the industry for a long time. Do you think the idea of like exclusive games is gone? Like you see Microsoft starting to starting to make this transition. They're saying, oh, these games are going to be on Xbox. Now some games on PlayStation 5. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. 
I think exclusives have always been a very expensive strategy, and it's unclear whether they're panning out. I mean, Epic Games tried this with their uh, with their launcher to compete against Steam. Uh, they went with an exclusive strategy. And, and for those of you who don't know, when you do an exclusive with a game, you're paying the game developer millions of dollars up front for that with no strings attached. Usually you don't have to earn it back or anything like that. So um, this is something that I think is a tactic that's waning. And also, as games get super expensive to make, you've got to monetize them wherever you can and so i think that's another uh pressure factor that's causing people to uh basically uh go multi-platform as much as they physically can and right now we're in an atmosphere in games and i can tell you from inside sources that cash flow is king that uh, games have to make a profit Set now. sail for adventure on playstation uh -oh, 5 <laughs> Was that an ad right. for piracy? Or? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for Craig to swab the poop. Oh, and and then you on. have to make the cash flow, you see. <laughs> and, <laughs> ironically, piracy is the solution to this. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> the funding, she ain't there anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, and I'm getting this from inside sources. It's like, hey, we got to make money. And so this goes for Xbox too. The subscription pass stuff, only a couple games, the lion's share of the playtime makes the money. And I think it's a it's a bad model, just like streaming is a, uh, is a bad model. Yeah. I just think it's really funny that this game that came out in 2018 and now in 2024, they're like, ta-da, look, you are now available on PlayStation. Well, this, well, it's a good oh, game. Why? Oh, I, I like the game. I, I enjoy really it. I just like think it. it's really funny that, you know, a game that's been out for so many years is now finally available for PlayStation 5. Yeah, it, it was announced a while ago. Remember, there was a big deal made out of Microsoft was going to release mm -hmm. a bunch of games that are like five years old or more mm -hmm. uh, on other platforms. And this was one of them because it's so old. I wonder how people are actually going to play it on PlayStation 5. Yeah, this is something, incidentally, this is something Sony, Sony has been doing for a while uh, as well. Not just releasing stuff on Steam, but what was the the baseball franchise? MLB The Show used to be Sony exclusive, is now on Xbox as well. They started doing that several years ago. So this is like, you're absolutely correct, Grums. This is like a strategy that is like, the, the exclusives thing is definitely on the wane. It's not really effective. And we've seen at both major companies, Microsoft and Sony, you see this cycle again and again of expensive exclusive, it flops. Expensive exclusive, it flops. And, you know, two or three flops down the line, eventually the studio's closed. It happened to Zipper Interactive. It happened to Psychnosis. It happened to studio after studio at both Sony and Microsoft. Or they turn into like a shell of their former selves. Oh, like yeah. And, and it used to be that, you know, you couldn't port a game easily between consoles because they had dedicated hardware that was very unique. But they're all essentially PCs now basically yeah. same graphics chip no, nothing special right so it it's like well uh there's money to be made and it won't cost me that much to port it so why am i leaving money on the table yeah. well i think that's a it's a, it's a realistic strategy even though you see uh you know that we had a story yesterday about xbox they're already planning you know they're working on their next xbox coming out and um you know so we're almost at a point where you, you got to start asking yourself when from an xbox and a playstation perspective like you know what are what are the differentiators be between the consoles they are pretty close to each other and and really the answer to that has always been the games mm -hmm. um whereas you know you look at the switch and you look at what they what they bring to the table and nintendo like yes the, those those consoles are nintendo they, they are they are mario machines that's what they do they yep. they release their products and nintendo has mastered the exclusive they have made they are so protective of their ips they make their consoles uh must buys whereas i don't feel like X xbox and um and playstation have, have done enough to uh to to do that so yeah it'll, it'll it's, be it's like a service that you access through a plastic box now right like microsoft has game pass and game pass is a bigger deal than xbox is right <laughs> more people are excited about game pass than they are about owning an xbox uh which is probably the strategy really uh at this point for microsoft is trying to make game pass work so that they as grum said it's all about cash flow they get guaranteed cash flow from a service like game pass not so much with the plastic bricks the sales for those go up and down so all right, we have uh, one really important story we need to get to before we get to Grums and uh, and all the stuff going on with you. Um, 
bullying is a very big deal in the video game space. We've this has been something that has been talked about many, many times. And a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament that <laughs> happened in Japan, a young lady left a tournament early, and there was a male player who was like, "Uh oh, what's going on here?" Was she bullied out? And he was like, "Oh no!" So he put a tweet out about it, and this is in this is in. Uh, uh, not my language, so I don't, you know, I, but it has been translated. Uh, this, 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 this man put out a tweet saying, oh, no, I think she was bullied. And the girl, after this kind of picked up some traction, it had almost 2,000 likes on it. The girl responded in a quote tweet above saying, I saw this because it was circulating, but considering the circumstances, uh, it might be me. For clarity, she says, I left halfway through because I couldn't stand the smell. <laughs> <laughs> Not like I lost or I or I was sad. So uh, we, we've all been wasn't... there. Oh yeah, <laughs> every convention. <laughs> yes, she wasn't bullied out. She just she was bullied out by the bo. <laughs> <laughs> These Yu-Gi-Oh players don't shower very often. So oh my they... god! I used to run Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments at a comic store I worked at. Tell me, we. We literally, one of them, we actually nicknamed, we had a nickname for him. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Fertilizer ass. Ew! It was the only way we could describe the aroma. It was the only way. And the smell would transfer to inanimate objects. We had to call him a fertilizer ass because he would leave the room. He'd be gone for 20 plus minutes. And the stench of his fertilizer ass would still be in the plastic bucket chair that he'd been sitting in. Oh, it's horrendous. Anyway, sorry. Uh, uh, listen, the most important thing you can take of this is make sure you read the instructions on your shampoo and then use it. Right, Blabs? I don't need to. It's just put your hair, rinse and massage or whatever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, listen. Go shower. Go shower. Yu-Gi-Oh oh. smelly. You smell a Yu-Gi-Oh Japanese yeah. player. Well, I just got to one thing i saw something in the chat saying oh of course the woke sim thought it was bullying no he was just looking <laughs> out for her there's nothing woke about that guys no. chill no 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 it's all i was trying to do was it was lead up to the punchline of the story that's no, no, all no, not you not you the the japanese oh, guy no, well, well so it was in japan maybe she was walking toward that suicide forest i don't know <laughs> just slowly walk till she saw the tweet Oh, she okay. was, was walking okay. over to the rickety stool and the rope factory. No, I just, yeah, and I uh, even talked to one of my guy friends who like plays a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! And he's like, oh yeah, they all smell. <laughs> 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 they all smelly, man. <laughs> Shower. That's Your pro life. level play right there. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Listen, the stinky they're distracted. Are, you are. <laughs> if they're distracted, they're mentally out of the game. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, oh, it's all part, all part of it. Sensory analysis. <laughs> all right. Let's get to some serious stuff here, Grums. You have had a target on you the last, I don't know, month or so, you know, since you've sure. really kind of uh, come out against all the uh, stuff that you've gone come out about. And I'll tell you, before we get into why you've had the target on it, why don't you just briefly talk about your overall stance in, in the video game space right now and uh, why people have had a target on you? I, I want to fix gaming and, you know, Cabrutus came out with his sweet baby detected um, curator group, which is over 350,000 strong now, uh, you know, bless him for that. Uh, and, you know, it really sort of um, ignited this sort of uh, awareness about how, why games are changing and gamers have so many gamers have come to me and said, I had no idea this was going on, but it explains so much. And because over the past, you know, a couple of years, we've seen our beloved franchises kind of trash. We've seen uh, the defeminization of uh, female characters. We've seen, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, swaps of whoever the heroes in the story get swapped with, a, with, you know, either gender swapped or race swapped. And people are wondering why this is happening. And I, I wanted to explain what was going on from everything that I knew because I wanted to see the focus on gameplay again. I wanted to see good stories, even good diverse stories. I think that's an excellent noble goal. But the problem is that for my friends in the industry, DEI has been weaponized 
and they don't feel safe in their own studios. They can't be creative and they are basically at risk of cancellation at any moment because they might have a different opinion. And I think that's wrong. And I think we need quality AAA games again. And the only way that's going to happen is if we get rid of this stuff. So you've been pretty outspoken on uh, on X about this, um, you know, pointing out uh, people within the industry, not necessarily developers, but uh, community managers, uh, various uh, people who are within the industry, whether it's media, people who uh, are have vocal, who, who are who have voices in the industry that uh, have gone out of their way to, I don't know, spread a narrative or be, uh, I don't know, kind of talk about that a little bit. Well, I, I do two things. One is I write Twitter threads about what's going on in the industry with ESG, how ESG works, how DEI works, what's it like to work in these studios. And I did, and the community manager stuff really started, uh, I think, uh, just last week where I spent a couple days talking uh, about a story where one uh, AAA community manager came forward to me and, and talked about a secret group a private group, not secret, a private group where community managers got together to coordinate. And, you know, that's fine. I can see professionals coordinating. But what goes on in this group is is not fair. It's not good. Uh, basically, there is a couple of community managers, a lot of them actually browbeating everybody else and threatening them with reports to HR if they uh, break rank from this narrative, you know, this progressive narrative that they're pushing. And uh, and they don't feel very comfortable, and 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 this particular person left because of that, uh, and it's gotten really bad. And it's not enough to be silent. Apparently, you cannot just sit there and say, "Hey, I disagree," but I'm not going to say anything because if you're silent, you are complicit, and that to me is a cult, right? And so everyone is expected to say the same thing, think the same thing, or else they're going to be reported to HR. And they sit at a very pivotal role. People don't really know what community managers do, but they are the interface between gamers and the developers. Developers don't have time, and execs don't have time to sit in Discord and forums and, and everything else just to see what's going on. They rely on their community managers to report what's going on with the gaming community. And if you have biased community managers or activist community managers, that's going to get filtered. The execs are never going to hear about they don't like the female character in the game because you made you made them with a beard or whatever, right? And uh, instead, they'll be told, "Oh, it's just a couple of trolls," or and and we should just ignore them. And it goes the other way too. Community managers set the policies of what you can and can't say, or have a large degree of input in them, and they also enforce those policies about what you can think and say in chat rooms, and what's acceptable politics and what's unacceptable politics. And they have free reign to ban and nuke threads and everything else. With very little supervision because that's their authority that's their ballywick so yeah. i thought it was important to highlight this story and as soon as i did people started sending me the accounts of some of these community managers and all i did was retweet what they said and it was pretty vile sometimes it was you know very anti-gamer explicitly why are you hiring a community manager that hates gamers it was anti-white and it was anti-male and this and and so I basically did a libs of TikTok. I just posted it right, and lar and largely without comment. Uh, and for that, that really kicked the hornet's nest. As soon as I did that, I was uh, I was I was elevated from you know I don't know DefCon three to DefCon one at that point. All right, so. And we're going to talk about, uh, you know, kind of how you got on, you know, because you you had went back and forth with the Kotaku uh, website person. And you know, I, I have a hard time calling anybody who works on a, on a blog a journalist, um, just to be clear. Um, so you went back and forth with them, but it wasn't until you started, you know, uh, at least taking notice of the community managers that you got on other people's radar. Um, and you've been called racist, and homophobic and transphobic. So I always like to ask this question so people can hear directly from you. Are you racist? Uh, well, <laughs> that's like, you know. Uh, Enthusiastically. That, that, that's a loaded question, right? It, because it, it, it's, it's something that they really like to throw around. You're an ist. Yes. 
right? No matter if you if you have anything to say about this and you don't toe the line and carry the narrative, they'll throw everything at you. Uh, you know, first of all, I I I was born in Taiwan. Uh, I'm not uh, a white guy. Uh, I am half white. My dad is uh, white, and my mother is Chinese. But I spent my life growing up overseas, and that's my background. And look, I want you know representation in games. That's cool, but make them good characters. Make them unique characters. Don't try to erase old characters or swap them or just and, and don't have this vindictive attitude where you're trying to destroy the past and try to tear down beloved characters um you know like in suicide squad with batman and how they treated him you know just because you're trying to push a point i think it weakens the i think it weakens your point when you can't create anything new but you have to attach it to something pre-existing and completely change it. That means your, uh, your argument isn't strong enough. And it is strong enough, but you got to do it right. And there are games that do it right. And there are games that also don't bash you over the head and try to make you feel like a horrible person. Games like Baldur's Gate 3, right? Lots of diversity in there. Nobody cares. Focus is still on the gameplay. Focus is still on great writing. And they're not trying to, you know, hurt any other uh race out there the paler shade as i call it and uh and i think that's where they need to go and we need to go if we want quality representation in games so if you say that then you're automatically called a racist because you have to be in favor of everything even the shitty ideas to promote diversity and that's wrong and that's killing games okay so in the last few days i would say uh nick calandra who has been on the shoes, who was on our show um, after they left uh, Escapist, or left or was fired. I don't quite recall what it was, but uh, they left to uh, start Second Wind. And he is a co founder and editing, editor in chief of Second Wind. And uh, they've gone on and seen uh, some great success through their Patreon um, for people backing them. Uh, he's kind of had you in his eyesight the last, uh, last few days or so. And he put out a, uh, a a thread talking about your your you know the game that you're working on right now, Ember. You can see the logo on your uh, VTuber shirt. And um, you know he kind of called this out. He says, "I think my favorite thing about Mark Kern is that his third failed game, Ember, has an option to buy a Founders Pack for up to fifteen hundred dollars. His little army uh, that wants wants him to be the savior of games would milk uh, his little army that wants him to be uh, be the savior of games would milk them." For all the money they've got so uh he links to this and these various uh i guess what are these explain that what these page are. is not even on our website link right you can't get to that page because we took those packs down uh last year as we're doing a soft relaunch and you got to question the timing of this it's like okay i started to talk very publicly about community managers and i started to post what they were actually saying and these guys are all friends, okay? These guys all know each other. Remember, community managers are, are, are adjacent to marketing and they interface with these people all the time. You got to wonder why now? Because they went from Mark Kern is nothing and his games don't matter to be like, Mark Kern is number one menace and look at this. And, uh, and I'd never heard of this guy before and people started sending me stuff and I just kind of ignored it. Uh, but it got louder and louder. So I was like, okay, I don't like to talk about Ember because I don't want to show it, but let's talk about Ember. So let's pull that up again. Let's unpack right. that one. The, the actual the actual tweet that was put yeah, up? Yeah, 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 that, that, that first tweet. Okay. All right. So, you know, first of all, third failed game. All right, my track record is many, many multi-billion dollar franchises. And I take issue with the, and the games he's talking about are start, are start with Firefall, right? I did not ship Firefall. I left six months before that game ship and they totally changed it. It's not on my bio because it's not the game that I made. And when they did that, because the Chinese owners wanted to make wow with guns so that they could sell it to additional investors, when they changed it, everybody started to really miss the beta. And that's when I presided over the design of that game. They say I made the best version of Firefall there was. So if you look just at timeline math, 
it's impossible for me to have failed at um, uh, at Firefall because I left six months before it shipped and the game did not and studio did not close until two years later. And they made numerous and they completely changed the game. They made numerous changes during uh, the time it was live and they ruined the game. And I wasn't even there. So that's just basic math. So that's unfair, first of all, to pin that on me. The second game they're talking about is a VR MMO that we briefly uh, launched. And it was too early. I mean, the, the cheaper version of the Oculus wasn't out there. Great project. Had a lot of promise. But it, you know, it, uh, it went to crowdfunding and it failed. And that happens sometimes. Investors... We had we didn't take any money from 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 gamers, right? We had investors there that had pledged up to one million dollars, but got to remember a pledge is different from actual funding, and a lot of that pledge was contingent upon the success of the crowdfunding, which just unfortunately didn't happen. So, so real quick, which game are you speaking of? Uh, that would be the if you go to his next tweet, mm -hmm. I think it's there where he talks about mech. Talk about uh, this one right here. This is a continue, continuation of the thread. from. Oh, okay. From, uh, he talks about that a little later, or someone replied to it. And that's the number two game, right? So that was a voxel-based, voxel, uh, voxel -based, you know, sort of like uh, Minecraft MMO light type of thing. And, uh, and we had private investors for that. We had two private investors for it that had pledged up to that amount uh, contingent. A lot of it was contingent upon the successful crowdfunding, and that didn't happen. So, But it was a great project, a great team. Uh, sometimes these things happen, you know, things don't get funded. Right. So and the third uh, one and the yes. third one he's talking about is the current project Ember. And that's the one that I think, you know, my community is all fired up about because they are upset about him, uh, talking about it in this way, especially some of my backers. You know, we have a, a super chat in here. I wanted to make sure I pulled this up. He is asking about where did I just had it? I want to make sure I had it. Uh, well, there's this one from Worthy One says, Hey, Grums, sorry, I got to go through this man. Real ones know you mean well. It's not rocket science. You just care about the well being of gaming. Thanks, Worthy One. Appreciate that. Uh, there was a question about, oh, here it is right here. It's from Black Cat it says, Grums, can you explain what happened with type with a uh, firefall in Red Five? Uh, since you're now on Ember, how can you? Uh, reassure those wary of past project challenges because and firefall was awesome in beta and everybody loved it and in fact the reason ember exists at all is because the fans of firefall who hated what the ship game was what they changed and how they ruined my design they ripped out my story they even changed the logo these were expensive changes to make i have to imagine that it was out of spite and when they did that people were like, what the heck happened to Firefall? We missed this game. And so they started a petition that said, hey, let's go ahead and, and start a spiritual successor to Firefall. And I said, ah, nobody wants that. It's like Firefall has gotten so much negative press over the past two years that they, as they ship crap that nobody wants that. And they said, no, we do. I said, okay, you know what? Let's do a website. And so I did a little crowdfunder and I said, what's the least amount of money I can ask for? And I was like, 250. Let's do 250. But the limit on Indiegogo was 500 bucks. And so they funded that, like, I don't know, like two grand or something like that. And I'm like, okay, okay, let's see where this goes and let's do, let's do a website. And that was the only goal of that fundraiser. So we did a website and the forums and then we started getting people and more people and more people. And so I was doing a tabletop at the time. And I said, okay, maybe um, this is what people really want. So let's make it a, a multimedia project where the tabletop will tie into the game. We'll focus on the game and then we'll come back to the tabletop and we'll do, uh, we'll do a novel series on it too. And that's how that whole thing started. And as far as, you know, what happened at Fire, uh, uh, with Fire, Firefall and Red 5, that, that's a big story. And I don't think we've got uh, enough time to go into that, but it was... Uh, you know, uh, like you said, just look at the timeline, do the basic math. I wasn't even there. So let me kind of um, expand on that a little bit, right? Uh, they're asking about the, the uh, you know, the kind of what can you do to reassure people about Ember, right? And uh, I think can a you? lot of people would say, say oh, you cool. know, you, oh, you've, uh, you know, you've had money contributed up to this point, people have backed it. And, you know, some people say, well, you know, there's, there's uh, 
what, what can you show me? What has been done for this game? Do you, you want to kind of talk about that and kind of give people a timeline on yeah, the game? Yeah, let's what, talk what about say? that. Because yeah, if, listen, uh, the problem I had with crowdfunding was everyone does a crowdfunding for a game and says, we're going to raise money for the game. And they do one crowdfunding and, that, and that's it. And they're supposed to make an entire game from it. That doesn't work. You can't raise enough money off of one Kickstarter or Indiegogo to make an entire game. Uh, that unless it's like like a really basic game, right? Yeah. So we and that's probably why they. I and I'm I'm just speaking out of turn here, but I think they. Uh, I, I've seen, for example, we were talking earlier about BattleTech. BattleTech yeah. did a Kickstarter for a game. They wound up having to go with a publisher to make up for the funding they didn't make from the Kickstarter, even though they did really well on the Kickstarter you often need more money to get across the finish line. Is that about the size of it? That's exactly it. And I had a big problem with Kickstarters that were promising an entire game off of one Kickstarter. So I said, let's break it. Let's use the publisher model. Publishers fund game on a milestone basis, month to month sometimes. So you're supposed to deliver or six months at a time as dev cycles got longer. You deliver a slice they pay for it. You deliver another slice, they pay for it. I said, let's do that with backers. And that keeps us more accountable too. So on our Indiegogo M3 uh, milestone, if you want to pull that up, that was a milestone to do some very specific things. We were asking for $20,000 and we said, this is one of the fundraisers we're going to do. We're going to have 10 of these. We're going to have 15 of these micro milestones that each one funds. And if we're doing our job, then you'll fund the next one. And if we're not doing our job, then you're not going to fund it. And that says everything. So if you scroll way down, keep going. This is all the good news where we had, we talked about all this uh, unlocks. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see, all right, scroll up. And uh, you'll see what we were, uh, oh no, sorry, go down again. <laughs> so. This was a very specific milestone, and we were supposed to deliver a couple of key assets, and we did. Keep going. Down, sorry. So you feel, down. You, you feel like you delivered on, on this, uh, this Indiegogo? Yes. So uh, scroll up from here, mm -hmm. past the image. I'm, I'm sorry, I should have like given you the image. Uh, scroll down again. <laughs> <laughs> all right tell you what so this had a very specific goal right and you can see how we explain milestone based funding here and we were supposed to deliver uh, a working a working mech uh male and female characters one gun single player and some stationary targets that you can shoot at that is done right we that is that is something that we delivered four years ago and so this indiegogo is closed people say oh you didn't update the indiegogo well that's because everybody moved to discord nobody talks on indiegogo anymore and we talk to our backers on discord and they're all there and you can post that link in chat and people can join us and you can ask the backers themselves so the idea was that we break it up into these mini milestones and we actually completed that indiegogo and then we were supposed to come out with the next milestone. The problem was that I lost track of sight of that plan. I was like, okay, because what happened was a couple of things. We had COVID hit and that really decimated uh, our productivity and our team. We didn't know what was going on or what the future was going to be. And the other thing that hit was crowdfunding for uh, for games dried up on Kickstarter. It, uh, around right about the time we did ours, it was gangbusters. Uh, you know, people promising MMOs were raising two, three, ten million dollars, you know, with the with the back end included. And that all dried up. Nobody was funding Kickstarter games anymore. So we said, oh, crap, what do we do now? Because we wanted to keep going with these independent fundraisers. So we ended up putting backer packs on our site and we said, you know, we have to raise the bar. We have to go farther than what we delivered on Indiegogo in order to be competitive because people aren't going to back us unless they see something much more 
much more like a demo, much more something that you can play. And that was the goal. But the problem that I, and the mistake that I made was it was too big for a goal. We're all part-timers, right? I'm the only full-time person there. And the goal was too big and we abandoned the mini milestone model and we tried to do too much. And to be honest, you know, without like an Indiegogo or Kickstarter, you can't create that buzz for funding those milestones. So we were trying to do way too much. And at that time, we continued to deliver demos. And can we run the game footage in the background? Because the other thing we're accused of, is sure. there's no, there is no demo. And there is. So you can see here that, at here. yeah, you're looking at, uh, at Ember, uh, one of our Ember builds. And you basically see that we've got multiple weapons. We have missile lock. We have, instead of stationary targets, we have moving people. And we have uh, up to 100 players in this map. And we've had 100 players here. And we had this and we said we can't go to kickstarter with this we have to we have to do a graphics overhaul we have to do more gameplay in order to do it and that's when i think we went astray and it was compounded when um two years ago i had and i don't like to talk about this i had medical issues with my family multiple members of my family life-threatening medical issues I was at the doctor and labs two, three times a week. Uh, I've had my own health issues. And for two years, we struggled with this to figure out what was going on and what was happening. And luckily, things are better now. But during that time, you know, when you have a part time crew and it's only me holding everybody together, if something happens to me and my family, it's not like I have a giant company that carries on in the background. Right. Uh, and so that's when we didn't have any real updates aside from technology demos for two years and that's and when things got better last year i said okay finally we can proceed and i talked to the community i apologized to the community and said hey um this is this is not going right and we need to do a reset here just like no man's sky did a reset just like final fantasy 14 did a reset at the indie level we've got to do a reset and so i said we're taking down the backer packs and all those packs that he's talking about are gone and i said we're gonna focus on gameplay and when we have you we have regular demo drops again we're gonna turn the packs back on or we'll come up and we're gonna focus this time on coming back to our milestone based funding so yeah this is not a fund once and go uh no game can fund itself just from that and that's why you see so many failed kickstarters we were very clear from the get-go that this is milestone based funding and we had very tiny bite-sized pieces that we would fund as we went along and that's what we're going to go back to so let me ask you this in the upper corner you saw that the uh the date on that was uh i think it was 2021 yeah march yep. 19th 2021 that's that's three years ago now and i can hear yep. people saying well like well it's 2024 grums like, yep. like what do we, what do we have like i don't know, can you talk about the timeline on on when the next demo would be released so people can see it for themselves or play it for themselves so and 2021 was the last time you saw this demo but we released technical demos in the meantime because we started taking it apart we upgraded it to unreal 5 uh we swapped the train for voxels and we said we're going to focus more on less on the graphics and more on the functionality so we had we did release builds after this but it has no graphics you're talking about white ground you're talking about you know very sparse graphics and we, in some cases we actually have cubes for enemies because this is what we call white boxing in the industry before you dedicate a lot of time to finally polishing graphics you go back to just boxes and squares and we share we share the sausage being made. So we come out there and we don't hide our development builds. But unfortunately, that's what the reporters are cherry picking in order to say there's nothing here. Uh, and I think that's unfair to pick a white box prototype uh, and it's, to say that this is it's unfair, man, it's unfair for entirely different reasons. They are forcing you to go out into the weeds to justify the development of your game because you've been critical about a completely different subject altogether. It is a yeah. classic distraction tactic is what it is. It's to watch the birdie, go look at this instead of looking at this perfectly valid thing that he pointed out. You could be the biggest scam artist in the history of the video game industry and still be completely correct on this issue. It's laughable. It's a completely a diversionary tactic. Yeah. And that's why I invited people to our discourse. Like, listen, uh, 
you're not going to believe anything that I say. Go talk to our backers. You know, we've had our ups and downs. People know exactly what's going on. We're very, very communicative with our backers, and they know everything that's going on. Go talk to them. Join our Discord. And our Discord has been so positive and so uplifted by all of this that everyone's excited. So we're currently working on, you know, like I said, we have different tech demos and things out there. One of them is an art revamp. If you show some of our... Um, I think I sent you links of one of our characters, um, yep. the, the Feli character, as well as the the enemy units that we upgraded from what you saw in the demo. These are these are much higher quality than before because you have to be competitive in that space. Oh, not this one, the other one. Yep. There we go. So this is a Feli character that's rendered in Engine in Unreal, but it's with upscaled textures. So you've got 4K textures, and the hair is not rigged. I get complaints like, oh, that's just a sculpt. That's not the real model. No, that's actually the real model. It is rigged. You can animate it. I pose that character myself. The hair is the only thing that's sculpted there and not rigged because I'm still not sure of the hairstyle. But you can see that we're vastly upgrading the graphics quality here. And you can switch over to the other video I sent you about the enemy units that are uh, that we have. And these are actually animated. So you, there is a uh, test demo you can download, and you can actually pilot this guy. And then we have swarmers, and we're working on technology that lets us do horde mode, where we can render hundreds of thousands of these little guys on screen at the time. Uh, because we are a, a kind of like planetary war game where you've got 100 players PvE versus monsters. So this is what we're doing. It's like, okay, we got to up the quality level. We got to put this into a new demo and get it out to backers. And I think we're looking at about a quarter here. I'd like to get something out to backers in the next three months and then break it up into mini milestones again. Uh, the original vision for how you fund, how you how to properly crowdfund a game and keep crowdfunding projects accountable and instead of trying to do this huge monolithic demo at one go we're going to break it into little pieces and fund it that way so as far as a uh, let's let's just put like a, i know we only have a minute or so left with you grum so i want to be uh quick and ask a, a question i think most people would want to know is like okay then what's a timeline and on a real like a realistic release date for for this game is this uh 2025 2026 you know and um kind of here's talk what about i say that. here's what i say so w once we have these mini milestones they're ultimately supposed to lead up to a kickstarter that is provable that people can download and play and that kickstarter would be the bulk funding to start the company right and the success of that kickstarter the amount we raise determines the final scope of the game and the release date I can't tell you how long it's going to take till I can tell you how many people I can hire, right? And no one's full-time right now. So that is what our backers know. They say when Kickstarter starts and we do the raise, then we know the interest level, then we know the funding amount we have, then we can lock down the scope of the game and we can lock down the team size and that's when we can give you a release date. But honestly, you know, we're doing an MMO light. This isn't like a huge MMO. And Indiegogo doesn't even talk about it being an MMO because we've had a hard time pitching the idea of what this game is like, even starting with Firefall. We struggled with do we call it an MMO or not because it, we're, we're not MMO-based combat. We're shooter first. We're action-oriented first. And Helldivers came out and gave us a very nice boost because we could say, Imagine Helldivers, but instead of a galactic war, it's a planetary war, and you're fighting over zones in a map, you're pushing them back, you're unlocking them, and they can push back against you. And it's you versus a massive AI, in, in, you in power suits and mechs versus a massive AI enemy uh, with the, that uses kaiju and war beasts instead of tanks and planes. And that is something that we can communicate now. And you can see that that's a meta layer. It's kind of an MMO light layer on top of it. Uh, no, no, we never do raids. We never do dungeons. Nothing like that. So that is, uh, I think, the, the the long and short of it. And I think that uh, this uh, this Nick guy uh, gets a lot of things wrong. But I think Asmongold's interpretation in his video was very fair. He said basically that listen, there is an obvious bias here, and it's not wrong to ask for money. Because if you're going to crowdfund something, you have to do backer packs. And of course, they picked only the, the two most expensive packs out of like 12 that we offer, right? And this is something where um, he said, listen, there's an obvious agenda here, but 
the game's taken too long. And Mark Kerr needs to answer for that and explain what's going on. And so that's what I'm doing here today. We made a mistake moving away from our mini milestone goals. We still delivered stuff. We delivered on our Indiegogo. That's done. Long been done years ago. We didn't break it down into many milestones there. And for the past two years, I had to choose family over the game. And it was a very hard decision, but I'm very glad I did because everyone is okay. And I think coming after me for my kids being sick, for me being sick, is a low blow. And I think that that's entirely politically driven. So if I could give the middle finger right now in my avatar, I would. Go fuck it's yourself, politically Nick. driven regardless. Like all, like I said, all this is out in the weeds. All of this is forcing you to justify something that is completely beside the point. If you were a layman standing on the street who didn't develop games, you still would be completely valid in your criticisms and you would still have receipts to back them up. So it has nothing to do with the game. Everything I say is their own words, uh, reports from inside the industry. I'm telling what's going on and they're bringing in something completely extraneous into this. And actually, I don't mind so far. I said, oh, I'm going to I'm going to call Ron. I'm going to raise a legal fund if you step out of line. And then I retracted that because I was like, oh, actually, this is going great. The community is galvanized and pulled together and we're more motivated than ever to uh to make ember a fantastic game and it's going to be a fantastic game so let's close with this you, you, you were kind of going there but i want to i want to give you a you know the time to if you could have a direct message to those who are you know coming after you who say hey you're attacking you're attacking those community managers what would be your direct message to them look all I'm doing is posting what they're tweeting themselves on a giant social platform. If that is something that they don't want people to see, they shouldn't be sharing it with the world. And people need to know about this because it is something that directly affects game development. People say community managers have nothing to do with the game. Actually, they do because they are the interface between gamers and devs. They filter the information up and they control what information gets disseminated down and they police, ban, and moderate the communities themselves. That's a lot of power to influence the game. And this is not a place where politics yeah. and DEI should be. This is a place for neutrality. And you know, I'm not saying fire these people. You can move them into marketing. You can even move them into producer roles. These are, these are both paths that I've seen, you know, uh, but get them away from gamers. Yeah. This is not the first time this tactic has been used, by the way. I did a video called Hollywood Was Always Red that went through the history of some of the ideological years of Hollywood in the 30s and 40s. And one of the ways that movies were skewed wasn't so much that they put communist propaganda or whatever into movies it wasn't really that it was more so that there was a script writers union that was affiliated with the american communist party or with the hollywood communist party and they would get the script readers to read particular scripts in hollywood and sort of nix things that had things that they didn't want to appear in movies and slowly over time you started to get more of an ideological bent there so the gatekeeper this kind of the low level gatekeeper winding up affecting the overall quality of the final product is old, old tactics. It's just moved into the digital age, it sounds like. Yeah, I, th this is a, an ancient playbook, probably laid down by, if you follow the conspiracies all the way back, laid down by the Soviets, right? Back during the Cold War. That video has been going around and it's shockingly accurate. <laughs> all right, that? guys, I do have to take off. Yeah. I, you know, uh, you know, we could talk more about this. They're lining up hit pieces right now. Uh, I imagined a, there's going to be a focused, coordinated assault either end of this week or early next week. Uh, and, um, you no, know, dude, this, uh, these screenshots right there, I could tell you, they scream what we witnessed in the Battletech community, where in this private server that people were paying attention to, community managers and whatever were literally just digging up the dirt on all the social media on the person. Oh, here's a screenshot of this. Oh, here's a thing that you could hit them with. This sounds like the opening salvo in that. So I think you're dead on the money on that. Yep. And I ain't going to stop. They can keep trying, but uh, these are important issues to talk about. And, you know, they're not going to have any effect on me whatsoever. So well, thanks, everybody. Yeah, for sure, Guns. When those hit pieces come out, buddy, we'd love for you to come back on and we continue the conversation, man. Appreciate you. Sounds good, man. Thank you for having me. All right, Grums. We'll see you soon, buddy. Bye.
Good to meet you. Yes, absolutely. And stay in touch. Follow me on Twitter. Sure. Yep. You guys can find Grums over on X uh, at Grums, G-R-U-M-M-Z. Uh, it's an interesting conversation, you know, and and I think it's uh, very cool to be able to, you know, actually talk with somebody as opposed to talking about somebody, which is great. And Ray, you bring up some really, really good points about the uh, kind of the, the playbook associated with all this. Yeah. Um, lots of uh, lots of comments on this. And uh, once again, if you're new, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Join us. We're live Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, record viewership today. People are obviously very intrigued by by all this. Uh, so we'd love to see you guys back tomorrow. Once again, here Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Central Time. Let's go ahead and hit some Super Chats real quick. Um, I want to hit some larger ones. As uh, Dilly Bod came in, says, a game, made for ev- um, a game made for everyone is a game made for no one. I believe this. Making a game right now for myself. If people like it, cool. If people don't like it, cool. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, I I made a video years and years and years ago called The Myth of the Hardcore Game. And really, all it was about was this kind of marketeering speak in the video game industry that I think has led to a lot of crappy games getting released, um, where people presuppose that this particular gaming concept is too hardcore or that one's too hardcore or whatever. Years and years and years ago, Demon Souls and Dark Souls would have been considered way too hardcore a concept. Well, go look at Elden Ring sales right? It's up to marketers to market the game, make the game that is good. And then worry about, let the marketers worry about actually selling it. There's no such thing as a hardcore game because guitar hero would have been considered too hardcore of a concept until it became the biggest thing on earth. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, the, the one thing that I hear consistently is, is that the hardcore audience doesn't exist this idea that like the straight white male is not your primary primary customer here and i feel like a lot of that is skewed by the esrb and specifically there's a um, there's a study that says it's something like you know 48 percent of gamers are female right and it's like oh okay and on the surface you read that and you go oh, okay that makes sense or 52 percent or whatever it's 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 surprisingly large right and you and you hear that and you go oh wow wow that's crazy and you think of girls sitting down and playing hell divers too right but in reality when they say yeah. gamers it means anybody who downloads something on their phone yeah right? the and candy they're crush candy, right they're playing candy crush so that skews this and ultimately that gets taken back to uh as, as a larger demographic and it's like what well, you know have you ever been to a game like have you been to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament and smelt the <laughs> smelt what you smell <laughs> have you <laughs> smelled them? Have are you, you on a first them? name basis with fertilizer ass young lady <laughs> right Hey, Dilly Bond, look, look at that, buddy. Thank you so much. We're going to go on the wall. You're, we're going blue today. We're going to fill out that blue right there. Blabs, will you continue on with uh, some of these great super chats starting at the top? Yeah. So, Dianastic says, if only Craig knew Lord of the Rings, then he could use a wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he's meant to line. I mean, you could also do the That's Julie right. Andrews line of Princess Diaries. A queen is never late. Everyone else is simply early. Your, call, your choice, man. You want to be? I'll Gandalf go with the Lord of the Rings line or the princess line. <laughs> <laughs> She's queen. <laughs> um, Vork eighty eight for five. I tried to see it, but I live in Florida, and I only caught it as a way as I, it was going away using my dad's welding helmet to see it. That is awesome. You stuck on a welding helmet. And I wish I had a welding helmet. <laughs> Just lying around. Aha! Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, Varn, happy Tuesday, gang. Have some shekels. Trying to move away from Twitch and wary of YouTube. Is the move worth it or have some alternatives to recommend? Uh, Kick, Rumble, Locals? I'll say this. The discovery on YouTube is considerably greater than it is on Twitch. Make the jump and do it. Mm -hmm. At one time at Bandcamp, Razorfist, do you use a Hotas for playing Mech Warrior? If so, which one would you recommend? Yeah, I. Why do all the joysticks sound like sexual aids? Um, I'm not it's sure a, what this is gonna be. I use a thrust master. Okay, that's the name of this thing. It's a thrust master. Good for um, you. Dude, hey, yeah. It's the one with like orange LED lights on it. I forget exactly what the model is, but it's awesome. It's actually really good. It's not super expensive. It's the one that came out that was released for uh, Elite Dangerous. I also have a more hardcore Hodus stick. That's a uh, Hodus Warthog. That's uh, really, really neat. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. It's fantastic, actually. 
Um, and it's it's not super expensive. But the more expensive one that I have for like VR flight sims and stuff like DCS, that's an actual Hodas Warthog. And that's a beast. I love that thing. All right. 60 Watts says, typically, I don't like games with souls like combat mechanics, but put a hot girl in it and make her jiggle and I'll pre-order that twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, pro you're part of the problem, 60 Watt. So we need game. that sexism sticker. Uh, Matthew Hammond, there was a 2 a.m. ballot dump for the extended cut. For the Stop the count. Stop the count. <laughs> Trippy Originals. I made a song out of you guys talking yesterday. Yeah, I heard it all. The ending is literally like, so uh, do you guys like pickles on remix? Yes, Quite thank you for that. Trippy Thanks. Originals. <laughs> Robert Hartman for 499 crumbs, man. You didn't know what a blessing you are, not to just gamers, but culture. Keep standing firm. Robert, thank you very much. We'll pass that on. And why don't you say this name, Craig? Socrates. Yeah, okay. A massive amount of Berserk fans were having PTSD when they kept hearing about the eclipse yesterday. <laughs> hmm. Eclipse? Guts theme. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to have to stop there. You pronounce it eclipse? 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 Is that like a clip on the <laughs> internet? What is that? <laughs> Eclipse? 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 Sounds like an online based hairdresser or something. Like, what <laughs> is that? <laughs> go, go to the Eclipse app and uh, yeah, schedule yeah. your time. You're going to get my bangs <laughs> done at, at Eclipse. Like, what? <laughs> you know. Um, cider yeah. hype. What's Grum's favorite style of butter dish? Oh, here we go. Do you have a butter <laughs> dish razor? Uh, yeah, somewhere. I never use it. Savage. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> John, blindness cures Miss Jackie Net. Okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't get blindness it. Blindness caught. Uh, the Garth Knight returns. The Eclipse. <laughs> the most expensive publicity, publicity stunt for Rebel Moon Part 2. Mm. I'll say this. Looking at that yesterday... It was the damnedest thing I've ever seen. It was, it was, it was cool. Really, it was very cool to see. Like if you look yeah. in straight up the sun without when when you didn't have your glasses on. I'm and, blind. No, 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 no. When it was at the full, full eclipse thing and like the outline, I was like, wow, that's pretty fucking awesome. I remember thinking that. Like I, I and I was like, yeah, it was very, very cool. I liked it. Would watch now, again. Did you look at it without the glasses on the entire time, Craig? Were you no, one of those I, people I, who Googled it saying my eyes hurt? No, no, no. I, I did not like Spike came in here. <laughs> no, it's I did not. Search on Google. Yes, thanks, Spike. His, his rods and cones are all scrambled. His Actually, your, like your rods burned. and cones are still scrambled from those beer goggles. Craig's oh, retina you... fell out. Dude. Extra uh -uh. zero. Seriously. <laughs> Extra zero says, see, and here I thought the shades are just because you're all trying to form a Ronnie Mislap tribute band. Millsap? Millsap. I'll I'm pretend blind. to understand that reference. Yeah, I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> Peach T, Blabs, how old are you? I grew up sheltered, but wow, you're remarkably innocent. Actually, don't ever change. I think you're adorable the way you are. Well, I'll be 28 next month. Does that count? <laughs> <I'm just defeated. laughs> There's Ronnie Milfat, by the way. Is oh, that? Hey. I have no idea what that is. Yeah. I don't know, but he's 75 years old now. Good for him. What a life. Um, Unpotatoed salmon. Razor Fist versus SFO debate when? Short, Short fat of talk you. Yeah. Dev? Are you I don't guys know. fighting? Oh, what? No. <laughs> I don't even know the guy. Boxy match when? Ring, ring, ring. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gamer Citadel. Would love to see the ghost of Kiev, a.k.a. Sam Hyde, on the show with Razor to talk games. Hopefully no game developer puts them in a self-defense situation. Mm. Uh, Sophie. Hell, do you all have a butter dish? Show them. I do have a butter dish. I'm not showing you it. That's weird. Like that's some weird. That feels like some weird kink on the internet now. Show me your right? butter dish. Yeah, show me Ooh. your butter dish. You, I love the way your butter dish rolls or whatever uh, it is. Like, nah. <laughs> don't make it weird, Blabs. But I was giving examples. Shut up, Craig. Go back to We're gonna your corner. We need to side for butter dishes. Oh my god, no. <laughs> Embrace it. <laughs> the observant otaku. Rosie, have you ever played the game Brutal Legend? Played it. Reviewed it. I think I even streamed it, but with all the copyrighted music, it's probably copyright claimed into oblivion. But yeah. Yes, I reviewed it. It was one of my first videos, that, uh, video game reviews that I ever reviewed on YouTube. I remember I worked on that video. I'd edited it while I was sick as a dog with pneumonia. I'll never Oof. forget that. Oh, it was brutal. 
Did hey, you like brutal it? Brutal legend. Yeah. All right. Uh, B C. The book tales of the bee hunter says Boba escapes. All right. Thanks, B C. Uh, veggie bad. Hey, Grums. How nepotistic is the gaming industry as a whole? Are there people who really have no knowledge of game development taking jobs just because their friends and family work in the industry? Well, I would probably say yes. It's like Hollywood. You have people yeah, like that in Hollywood too. As with any industry, it's all who you know, one hundred percent. Or, or in the case of Blizzard, who you sexually harass. Um. Mm, and then cover up. Oh, wait, no, that was Activision. Never mind. <laughs> well, same. it's Blizzard Activision. It's same, but yeah. Why not? You're right of the house, right? Dear Smash players, t please take a shower. <laughs> That's right. PTSA. Um, St. G, the problem why some people smell at a tournament or convention is because many only shower at night. I have a friend like that. No, it's because they don't put on deodorant and all those other stuff. Well, they don't shower at all, and some people yeah. go days without it. And yeah. it like, dude, like we've all been there. We've all walked by the guy or been around people and being like, okay, you know, uh -huh. like there's there's a certain ripeness associated with conventions. Dude, even a bar. I had some people came to a bar and they were smelly and they were dancing right in the middle of the entire bar. It's like you ruined it. <laughs> I'm imagine Blab sitting there and some guy walks up. He's like, "Hey, baby," and she's like, yeah. <laughs> "No, I'd be like, fuck off." Mm -mm. I bet, I bet any guy that met Blabs at a convention would do the hover hand thing. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Actually, Tom Felton did that. So, but him, he did that for everybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The anti gravity Blabs. Hand. Yeah, Jacob Malfoy. You don't want to assault anybody. <laughs> Canada, Dave. You mean the Canadian healthcare forest? Thanks. The Canadian healthcare forest. Where they send him <laughs> oh, out no. I just got that. Sorry. I don't get it. That's a reference anyway. to uh, to Razor's line earlier yeah. uh, about yes, the suicide yeah. forest in uh, in Japan. Yes. Right. Okay. Andrew Van Halen. <laughs> the stench is the reason. Oh wait, we just got the. Oh wait, no, we didn't. The stench is the reason why I avoid most cons. Call me a bigot, but I'm not a fan of the smell of weed, patchouli, and raw butt sex mixed together. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed okay. to what? Pasteurized butt sex? How does that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, Thank I never you, thought I'd be saying that word today. Yeah, fortified with calcium. What? Ah. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> um, Alan Octavian Moldovan. Razor, just want to say a big thank you for introducing me to Battletech. Shame the owners are going well. Also, Land and Sea by Pardo is just awesome. It is. Fortunately, they're not the owners of Battletech. They're just the current licensees. So they'll they'll go away eventually. They all do. Music and fiction. I hope Grums watches Kirsch's Expose on DEI 2.0. That'd be good. Uh, rebound. So in other words, the community managers are in a key position to insulate the developer from the commons and guests like the developers. Yes. Yep. Truth. Uh, super sa Satan Sun. It was 10 years ago with Heavy Rain when I first felt AAA games were trying too hard to imitate Hollywood movies. Now both went to hell. I thought that kind of gameplay was the stupidest shit ever. Bless indies. Heavy mm -hmm. Rain's a great example of what we were talking about earlier, too, with the shutdown servers. There's DLC for Heavy Rain you can no longer get. You'll never, it's not re released in any of the re releases or remasters of the game. It's gone. Just, just gone just forever. Get to yeah. play it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Coffee, tea games. Oh, look at that. I love gaming. That's adorable. At Grums, thank you for bringing us one of the best MMO ever created during the OG days and your effort in fighting alongside passionate gamers to make gaming great. Look forward to your next project. Stay safe. Sorry we didn't get to that while he was uh, on the show, but we greatly appreciate your support. Uh, Captain Furlaw. Look at that avatar. Second wind a a a a APT apartment. Appointment? Apt name name oh. for a company based on Yahtzee's farts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Captain. For a okay, while. I was like appointments. <laughs> um, right side, says, What's up, Craig? You and DSP <laughs> should should see about playing Smash Remix, a uh, Smash sixty four mod on a live stream. That plus, uh, give them a shout out. Uh, no to both. <laughs> How about that? Uh, no, no I shout I out. I Ivy, it sounds like a like a furniture store or something. Ikea, they have you great cinnamon buns. Meat. Yeah, well, <laughs> the Swedish meatballs. Yeah, it sounds like you can get a nice comforter there. Mark, <laughs> Haynes, 
Supporting non-woke indie studios is the solution. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. Gigabear came in and says, beta, beta Firefall was the best Firefall. Thanks, Gigabear. Appreciate that. Um, Kite, the Twin Blade, says, GG never ended, old comrade, old snake of GG. Thanks, Kite. Jack came in, says, Hail Side Scrollers uh, from the Razor Force, AAA gaming industry, going to find out that games backlog, backlogs exist and we don't need their DEI slop. Godspeed. Yeah. There's a giant uptick of retro gaming happening right now. And, yeah, uh, with, I, I imagine sites like GOG are probably going to profit and are profiting off of it quite a bit. You know, we've talked about the, uh, like, we, we've seen a lot of growth on the, on the channel, which is an excellent viewership, record viewership over on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I think I see it saw over 3,800 people watching on Rumble. Very, you know, we had uh, great viewership over there throughout the show. And it's really simple, right? The entire message of side scrollers is you're not fucking insane. Like that's it. Like that, that's pretty much it. You're a normal person. Everything around you is fucking insane. And people right. seem to gravitate to that. It's yeah. amazing how what a simple message that is. Yeah. And, not uh, not me though. I've been diagnosed. Yes, not you. <laughs> Anything but you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, as I said earlier, somebody somebody said this about the show. Like, like our show is a reality check to the video game industry, which is why we're climbing the charts as far as top podcast in America and Canada and in Zimbabwe, right? <laughs> like uh, it was Uganda. Biggest <laughs> podcast in the mountains of Zaire. That's right. <laughs> right. So uh, join us once again, follow us over on Apple podcast and, uh, and let's, let's get up to number one. And because once again, that's going to be such a great middle finger to everybody. It's going to be so great. Just uh, follow us over on Apple podcast. Link is down below. Uh, when we have number one, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a big Howard Stern style uh, blowout. Where at the end, not not today, Howard Stern. I'm talking like later. Yeah, I was gonna say you're you're slowly gonna get a lot less entertaining over the course of 20 years. <laughs> and then just yeah, turn into a hermit in my in my house. And just, right, no, right. No, no, no. I, I, I mean like the big blowout. He laughed had so to... hard that he still got COVID despite that. His his blood was like 90% vaccine and 10% wig adhesive, and he still got COVID. Freaking oh, amazing. It's amazing. Uh, Joe came in and says, check out the new Star Wars Outlaws official story trailer for, with 4,000 views and saw it 10,000 likes. Uh, Blabs, you watched that. What'd you think? Uh, not very good, but we are going to discuss it tomorrow because there's a couple things that I have discovered, and it's we're going to talk about it tomorrow. So come back tomorrow, guys. Okay, sounds good. Warren came in, says, Grums, I'm OG EverQuest in Star Wars Galaxy. Vanilla WoW was magical for me, and it should have ended uh, with Wah. Uh, it feels like uh, it feels heav heavily DEI injected now. Um, thank you very much, Warren B. I don't know what W O T L K means. Wrath, sure. Wrath of the Lich King. Oh, there it is. Yes, oh, there it is. They the really Lich do King. mean stuttering crack. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes when I see a bunch of letters together, I just word vomit. That's kind of how it goes. <laughs> Uh, the copper owl came in and says, Blabs is, is too innocent. Keep Taryn away from her. Yeah, what is this Taryn talk, Razor? Do <laughs> tell me. It's my editor. I don't know. Your editor's had, your, had his eye on you for a long time, Blabs. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. breathing heavily outside your window right now. I hope you don't well, mind. Well, hey, Taryn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, don't, don't encourage it, Blabs. <laughs> oh, wait. Shh. Your game is justice for grums. Thanks, Gear. Appreciate your... Uh, your Indonesian monies. And Valkyrie, who came in yesterday with 50 gifted memberships, also became a member, member today. Hey, hey Blabs, Blabs Taryn just texted me. He said, you need to trim your hedges. <laughs> <laughs> that means a couple of things. Uh, <laughs> Dylan came in. <laughs> yes. Win Sabaton. Right. Razor. <laughs> I do actually want to review Sabaton. I do. Iron Age Media says, I mainly cover indie novels and comics, uh, but we've done indie games and films as well. If there are gamers who would like like their reviews or promos rehosted on Iron Age Media, I'd love to chat. There you go. Check right it out. On. They do great. They release a uh, magazine, and they also have ironage.media, which is a website where they cover a lot of like independent media and stuff. Kadith Gaming says, journals and CMs uh, trying to tactically outmaneuver the creative Starcraft 2 is the most hilarious thing, and this will not end well for them. Thanks, Kadath Gaming. 
Appreciate that. I am the Icarus came in and says, my thrust master in bio. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Mage Leader says, saw your stream Mech Warrior, uh, saw your stream Mech Warrior online the other day, Razor. Baby Jesus, Moses, and the Apostle Paul are all disappointed in you for shame. No one is more disappointed in me than me. Don't worry about it. Oh, uh, rough. Uh, L-A-O-T-D uh, says, worst convention ever for smell. A fur con went, went on while during a Comic Con in New York. I attended, still got PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, L.A. <laughs> Matthew says, uh, could we have a Hell Divers play session with Razor, Tarangel, Craig, and Blab? <laughs> that would be a sight. <laughs> I don't even own uh Hell Divers. I'm I must be like the last guy on earth who doesn't care about Hell Divers. We, we can Dude, change that. I've only been able to play it like once or twice. So like at this point, I'm like a level seven, everyone else is like level fifty. That's like there's no point in me even coming back to play. Everyone's like 10 times better than I'll ever be or more advanced. And they won't want to play with like a level seven because of like right. skills and all that stuff. You know what it is? It's not even that I'm not interested. It's that I know how I am with extraction shooters. And I know there's always a crazy learning curve with extraction games, right? Like Hunt Showdown is brutal and Tarkov, forget about it. Like it's you literally get PTSD from that game. So I know I'll get entirely too much. I feel like Razor would just act, kill me the entire time because there's friendly fire. He'd be like, "Oh no!" Yeah, and, and ah! then and then we would play the game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, <man? laughs> I'm imagining you running around and and Taryn like protecting you the entire time. I'll protect you, <laughs> my woman. <laughs> body shots. <laughs> like literally, not diving those kind of body place. shots. Blab, stop it. Ah! <laughs> Lance came in and said, isn't it funny that Canadian healthcare can be the eighth leading cause of death in their country? But if you say the uh, but uh if you say the word YouTube puts you in a timeout corner, right, right. Thanks, Lance. Uh bass player came in and says, There's a way around the dead uh the dead DLC, but you need a PC to do it. Find a save file that has that's played the actually. DLC. <laughs> uh that's how I played the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood DLC. Thanks, bass player. Josh says, my wife's a retro gamer. She can't stop playing Scrabble and Solitaire. Thanks, Josh. Oh, I'm it. really good at Scrabble. Just saying. Of course you are. You're a woman. Cesario says, I 22 mean, I days. Older. Than you. <laughs> I mean, why listen. You were, why was she, you think she was pushing that cooking game earlier for crying out loud? Ah, wait, there's a cooking game? The <laughs> restaurant <laughs> game. Oh, we right, about God, earlier. I forgot about that one already. <laughs> wow. In Dude, water, I told I you, I'm not really here today. I, I'm the walk. <laughs> you got her eye on other hot dogs right now. It's crazy. Uh, hey, Cesario not came in. Taryn. <laughs> 22 days till death battle is dead. Uh, quick update. I want to let you know I have put in an offer for Screw Attack. It is not, not their asking price. Uh, I cannot, I cannot go that way. And if if uh, somebody, if they take it, cool. If they don't, I put in my best offer and that's it. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I am. Uh, it, it's Warner who owns them, right? Yep. Warner Brothers Discovery. Yep. yep. They got like a fire sale going on on account of all their movies have lost money for like ten years. So I imagine, I imagine they're right. asking for entirely too much. Uh, yes, they, for Screw Attack, they're asking six figures, and it's I like, it. I'm sorry, you're asking six figures for a brand that has been dead for uh, the better part of a decade that hasn't released any new content for the better part of a decade. And that uh, <laughs> as soon as I left pretty much died. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. Um, Where do I Murphy. sign? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please sign me up. Um, Mercenary came in says morning razor. Got the game I sent you. Which one? I don't know. Yes. Yes. I assume <laughs> I haven't logged into steam, but thank you. Watch, uh, watch it be like boyfriend dungeon or something. <laughs> Candy Crush. <laughs> Lance says, uh, "Don't worry, Blabs. If Tarangel was actually here, you'd smell him before you see him. He also oh. <laughs> under bridges where he works." Yeah, take a shower. Man, <laughs> for a guy who's never been on the show before, he gets roasted more than me. It's I know. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, Zeno says, "Will Razor do a part two of the slow seppuku of uh, Square Enix?" Yeah, I might have to. They apparently the new Final Fantasy VII remake underperformed even in Japan, which <laughs> that's not good news for Square Enix. They put a lot of money into that. Yeah. 
Emperor Creatine says, I see, I see you have constructed a new thrust master. Your light sim experience is now complete. Yes. <laughs> you follow it up with one more it says, uh, meanwhile in Sabaton, uh, Razor is about to do a metal mythos on us. This is a perfect time to release a new album. Yeah. Um, over on Rumble says your friend, uh, your friendly neighborhood Fed says, "Hail Razor, what's your favorite Bond film for each of the actors? Also, what's your favorite Bond game?" For me, yeah, you are Razor, right? Oh, sorry, yes. I didn't hear the very beginning of that. Um, <laughs> favorite Bond film for every actor. Okay, let's start. Uh, obviously, George Lazenby only did one movie, so it's on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Favorite Sean Connery is. You only live twice. The ninjas in the volcano lair, forget about it. At any time, any day of the week. I love that movie. Um, for Roger Moore, it's got to be Live and Let Die. I love that movie so much. Uh, th then for Timothy Dalton, it is Licensed to Kill. For Pierce Brosnan, it is... Actually, The World is Not Enough. I love Goldeneye, but I love The World is Not Enough. For Daniel Craig, it is Casino Royale without question. It's a great one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, dude came in and says, Hardware exclusivity really only works if you make great games people uh, people want. And owning that physical copy means something. They haven't had any any uh, had any exclusive worth playing since the Xbox 360. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Uh, John came in with a $50 direct donation. Says, got a nice paycheck this week. Just show and support, John. Thank you very much. Thank you very we're gonna, much. We're, that's spectacular. Look at that, John. Look at that. Yeah. Look at, look at it, John. Mm. Look at say? our butter dish, John. He like fade into the distance, but um, I want to keep going. I'm whole. I can't read that. Just sell your house to buy screw attack, Craig, says somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the name I cannot say. <laughs> yeah, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> um, mute stream. Craig, eat your cereals with milk. Don't eat. Okay. Thanks, man. Do I very I very cereal? rarely eat cereal. Uh, cereal is, you know. I'm buying you a box of cereal. Same Christmas. here. I haven't had cereal in ages, and I just I had cereal. like a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios the other day, mm. and it was like mana from heaven. I was like, where has this been all my life? It's so it, good. It but did you know that cereal, like uh, Cheerios and Honey Nut specifically, is contained with a shit ton of chemicals that all the little kids are eating now? It was like a that's, whole thing. That's the least of the problems with cereal. It's got like bug parts and chunks of gym mad and pubic hairs and all kinds of wonderful <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's hey i'll say this about about uh cereal it is delicious but i feel disgusting after i eat it that's because you eat the shit craig you eat the oh, shit i don't eat, eat the, the shit. stuff eat the healthy no, no, no. stuff it's no way no way no 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 i mean there ain't nothing better than like a bowl of s'more cereal i mean that's delicious yes, there is. it's 10 times better no no it's, just, it's great i'm literally telling you well, oh, wait 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 Oreo O's, my friend. Oreo I've never had. Oh. But you, you know, know what? I do have some breaking news for you. What? Right. There was the largest fossilized human turd ever found, valued at $39,000. It's the Wait. Yeah. answers Wait. to the name of Mr. President. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what What's I found. Wait. So someone bought some fossilized shit for 40 grand? Yeah, from the 9th century AD, known to a sick Viking. And there it is. You got Viking. rid of it. Why should, look, it's going back, Craig. Look at that. Full screen. Mm. Okay, I'm done. It's poop again. Okay. I just had some breaking news for you, and I thought you'd like to know. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad, Blabs. Thanks for breaking such uh, such wonderful news on the, on the show. It's that's historical. what you can expect here. Yeah, that's what you can expect from this show. Top tier video game and entertainment news like Viking shit, which was good. Um, Jared says, thank you for putting the show on, over on Apple podcast. I've been listen, listening uh, to it a lot offline since I'm on the go quite a bit. Razor, uh, what do you think of the game Alpha, Alpha Protocol? I love that game. I streamed it uh, two weeks ago. Uh, they just put it up on GOG. I've always loved that game. A little hinky. You know, it was, all, it was glitchy when it came out, but what a cool concept, just a spy RPG. Reeve says, uh, this was uh, for Grums earlier, says, I see the leftist hacks are, try are trying to cancel you, but I think there needs to be more done in terms of, of transparency for, uh, from my perspective. And as Asmagold said, it's taking too long. I hope, hope it's the best. 
you know, hopefully uh, talking with the Grums today kind of alleviated some of that. Or if not, you can always reach out to him on uh, on X and see what he has to say. Uh, Grunda says, hey, Cre- uh, hey, Razor, do you like power metal? I'm going to see Power Wolf in Colorado here soon. They're my new, uh, they're my favorite metal band of all time. Do you know Power Wolf and Power Metal? I, yeah, I actually have a couple of Power Wolf records. They're pretty good. Um, I love Power Metal. I do tend to like more like the American Power Metal bands that were a little more Judas Priesty sounding uh, from the 80s, like the Man of War and the Thor and bands like that. But yeah. Nice. Hey, K1 came in and picked up the brand new limited edition Side Schoolers All-Star T-shirt available right now until the end of the month or until they're gone. And they're they're shrinking as far as quantity. Uh, K1 says, I identify as being on Team Side Schoolers, so I definitely need this badass shirt. Thanks, Craig. No, thank you, K1. Thank you for picking that up. Link is in the description right now. You can look good and pick up some other Side Schoolers merch while you're at it. Really appreciate that. That is great. Um, also Delta says uh, on the exclusive side, uh, I feel the only downside is the console war Sony or Microsoft undercut their consoles to build the fan base, which will recoup costs through game sales. Not to mention, uh, the annoying Twitter fanboys who think, uh, who think who we think are artificial. Thanks Delta. Then he followed up says, uh, just a heads up, uh, just to heads up because I saw chat earlier ripping on Eric July and whether Grums will try and use this coverage on the industry as a means to grift for his game later. Uh, if you feel that way, don't throw money at them. It's that simple. Right. I think that's, a you know, like if you don't, you don't, nobody is forcing anybody to back games. Like someone, someone said, how come I didn't do a, a, a crowdfunding on screw attack? Well, uh, there'll be a time where I, I don't want to do that now. I think that's the biggest thing, right? Like I realized it was important. Uh, screw attack was important to a lot of people, but at the end of the day, I'm focused on the future. I'm focused on what we're building here. And I want the ability, I want to focus on that moving ahead. And not only that, but of- when you and I originally talked about it, you said you mostly just wanted screw attack so you could put up an archive on YouTube, right? 100 so percent like yep. Yeah. So like how much is that worth? Right. It's not like you're gonna get a huge return on investment right away. It's no. not like like it's the pr- that does need to factor into the price if you're a rational human being. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. That is, and that's just it. The, the rational aspect of it. Uh, you know, I, I've made decisions in the past based off emotion and this can't be one of them. Like, unfortunately that's the reality right. of it. Like it the string of hooker murders, right? That's true. I have many bodies left in my path. Uh, <laughs> and I'd like to all those particular sacrifice. So. <laughs> Blabs reaction. <laughs> I think she's more offended that she wasn't among the victims. I don't want to be a victim. No, 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 no. Why no. wasn't I worth it? <laughs> you no. burrito chomper. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Marty came in with five gifted memberships. Let's go, Marty. Thank you very much. Uh, genuinely appreciate that. If you guys get a gifted membership, make sure you say a thank you and consider paying it forward. That puts us at six today. Our goal is 25. Let's see if we can hit that before we wrap up today. Miku says, stop being uh, odor, odor phobic. They, they support your livelihoods. <laughs> uh, Zeno came in, says, my favorite James Bond movie um, starring Mike Myers was, was Austin Powers. <laughs> Thanks, Zeno, bit. Mo says, hey, Craig, forget buying Screw Attack and just launch the inevitable iteration of the show and call it Spew Attack. Thanks, Mo. Appreciate that. Uh, that will not be happening. Mercenary says, uh, going to get you the Telltale Jurassic Park someday. Okay. Is that a Thanks video game? Now. Yeah, the Telltale's yeah, Telltale, first game. Yeah. You know, Telltale Studios, the mm-hmm. Walking Dead people. Their first game, I think, was Jurassic Park. I don't want to see that. I want to see what that's like. Interesting. Yeah, if I believe it, I think it's a uh, choose your own adventure, like point and click. Isn't that what they are? That's the just Telltale like all game. Their right? other te- yeah, all, just like all the mm-hmm. other Telltale games. Right, right. Uh, Yankee Lover says, will GG2 be another push or a true turning point? I think the next few months are going to be very telling, but ultimately we're not going to know for a couple of years because, um, you know, it really comes down to our, like, will shows like this truly be 
the reality check the video game industry needs, right? And that, will they listen? I don't know. I don't know. Ultimately, that's the idea. Like, that's why side scrolls exist. That's why uh, takings back exists, right? The idea that there needs to be a voice for gamers. And right now, everything that's being said is falling on death, uh, deaf ears and deaf ears. Yeah. Uh, Mute stream came in and says that's because there, there already is a voice for games. He's called Troy Baker. He's in everything. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Does this guy even uh, know the word? No, seriously. <laughs> uh, Garth Knight came in and says, uh, "Blab, say that." Butter dish. Yeah, perfect. Nailed it. Uh, specialist, uh, professional specialist says the Pokemon company listed a job for DEI compliance. Uh, is this the is this to future proof their company's finances or has Pokemon Company already gone broke? Uh, well, I mean, we've seen the characters the associated. Yeah, we have. Um, did you see the character models for the for the Pokemon game? How they shifted, Razor? No. Oh, blast! Please pull those up for Razor. I would love to get his reaction to that. What? Uh, Zeno says, "I thought I thought the largest fossilized fossilized turtle was EA." Let's go. Mm -hmm. Mute Dream says, uh, "Totes hate watching you guys." Thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, one more time says, okay, everyone give me a sub. Shameless plug. Thanks for your, uh, for your hate monies. <laughs> and uh, Cole came in. Gifted You're welcome membership. for your hate response. That's right. And Mercenary says, someone got, uh, someone got me a limited run game. I feel sorry for them. Yet, uh, yes, physical media is important, but they don't care about the culture war. Not important to us. Uh, yeah, the uh, limited run stuff. There, there's, there's a. Have you seen the Rugrats game that they're releasing? The NES no. Rugrats game. So no. it's it actually looks really cool, but I'm not gonna buy it. You know, one yeah. of those games that I. It, they're actually they're making a physical Rugrats game that can be played on an NES, and it they have an. Uh, if you buy the digital version, you can switch between the the modern art style and the actual NES art style. It looks really fucking great. The problem is, is that it's limited on games. And I'm not yeah, gonna I'm not same gonna here. I mean, I had a whole when all that stuff with Kara and everything and them firing her over that nonsense happened. I had a really expensive Knights of the Old Republic 2 box set thing pre-ordered from them. I mean, it was like 500 bucks. It was insane. And I canceled it right after that right and then i imagine a lot of other people did too because um shortly thereafter their ceo resigned didn't he uh i know that there was i think there were some changes that were made yeah i, I believe you're right i believe you're right yeah and isn't it amazing how like you know like the the, the poor publicity that they received from that and the lasting effect of just like, people saying like yeah that looks cool but yeah i'm not gonna buy that you know yeah. who Previously, there was a better, better than uh, zero chance that I would have picked it up, but now, now, ain't gonna happen. No. All right, Blaz, do we have any memes today? We do, but before we do memes, I want to show off the Pokemon Go bit. So you uh, can yeah. see this is the left, the original. The hips and the boobs are all gone. The lips have completely changed. They gave any kind of coloring to her. They turned her into a traffic cone. What is yeah, this? Yeah, so it's very androgynous. The, the shape of the jaw has changed. It's, yeah. So very, very androgynous masculine woman. But in other news, we have one meme today. This one. All right. That eclipse. It really did a number on Blab's eyesight. Quidditch World Cup, Billy the Wizard, Rocket Broomstick Racing. So, yeah, the end. <laughs> yes. There you go. And not to be outdone, Alan came in with the $20 Super Chat. Says Razor had a raw steak for breakfast. Hail <laughs> side scrollers. Shout out to the Clankers. Clank. Alan, thank you very much. Yeah, are you, you, uh, you, a big, you a big steak guy, Razor? I'm a big uh, cooked steak guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I got a flat top recently. I got a flat top uh, grill. I had to get a new grill. So I got a, like a, you know, oh. type you do smash burgers on. I'm going to tell you this right now. It's so much fucking fun to cook on a flat top. What are you running grill. like a fifties diner? What is this? It's awesome. Man, dude. <laughs> you're, like, you're like taking notes on what your kids want. You're like, all yeah. right, put it on, put it on a little spike. <laughs> right, right, right. Ring Got the it. bell. Oh, dude, if you don't ring a bell after your bur you fry up the burgers, come Somebody on. Somebody get him a bell. <laughs> Missed dude, opportunity. It's so it's so good. The flat top is so amazing. I love everything about it. I also love something that can't be cooked on a, on a grill, 
like this. Crispy Chicken came in with five gifted memberships. Thank you so much, Crispy Chicken. You see what I did there? That's good. Uh, I think if you guys got a gifted membership, make sure you say a thank you and consider paying it forward. And David says, uh, if you if you need to raise money for Screw Attack, take a trip to California where store, where store robberies are basically legal. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Thanks, David. Appreciate that. And uh, Mercenary says, they obsessed with making everything androgynous. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Talking about the uh, talking about uh, the Pokemon's things. All right, Razor, it's great to have you back. I know we took a little divert, a uh, little. Uh, the show was a little different today with with Grums on, but I think it was important to have that conversation. And you made some great points, man. For sure. Yeah, I, I was certainly speaking. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you spoke well so good. <laughs> well, we're glad you're back, man. It, it feels like home, and uh, we're we're ready to keep on moving. So, guys, with that said, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you're new. Hit the hit the uh, thumbs up button on your way out, and of course, go find Razor on his channel. Uh, you can find links to that down in the description below. You can also find Blabs over on YouTube as she oogles all sorts of ethos on a day to day basis. It's really weird, really weird as she looks at uh, girls on kick and twitch showing off their boobs it's i love really it how i literally say like i haven't done this in like five months and craig doubles down now she does it every day man oogling and boogling and whatnot mm -hmm. i find it offensive blabs that your female your female gaze <laughs> one, of the, one of these days she's gonna do like a, a hot tub stream watching a hot tub streamer while in a hot tub it's gonna be like oh i haven't done that i've watched a couple hot tub streams with that alabama you i've already got a name for you are you ready what? hot tubception mm, i should do a channel i'm just on yeah, that hot tub session, watching everybody <laughs> yeah. watching everybody from the hot tub the first thing the first step is to find a hot tub <laughs> yes i'm sure we can fund it i'm sure we can fund it <laughs> You need, you need to do a hot tub stream, but like be fully clothed from head to toe. Yes. No, wait, wear a scarf and a hat and everything. A full gloves. nun's habit. A yeah. full yeah. nun's yeah. habit. Yes. Yes. That'd be spectacular. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Thank you so much for popping in today. Once again, hit the thumbs up button. You're on your way out. Spread the word that side scrollers exist and continue to let people know that the world of common sense is coming back. Uh, appreciate you guys popping in. Have a great day. And remember, if people are going to try to keep you down. Don't let them. You guys got a goal. Go get it. Have a great day, guys. Bye bye. Say it, Razor. Godspeed. Fertility.